Welcome to Toe to Toe, a podcast for realtors where you'll witness a battle of opinions about topics affecting your real estate business. There are many ways for realtors to achieve success. The secret is to find which approach will work for you. Now, always in your corner, here are your hosts, Jen Mertland and Monica Weekly. Welcome to another episode of Toe to Toe. I'm Jen Mertland, and I'm here with my constant opponent, Monica Weekly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Each episode, we choose a different real estate topic to battle about, and we go toe to toe arguing our differing opinions. I think you guys know by now, our number one goal is just to help you find the path that feels authentic to you. There are so many different ways to find success in real estate. The goal is to be comfortable and confident in the path that you're running down so that you can build the business that you want and have the life that you want. That's what we're trying to do here, the Toe to Toe podcast. We're not trying. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay, yes. you're right. Ah, okay. And so today we're going to throw down on this topic, right? We're going to be duking it out. Jen and I are going to duke it out over this. Should you call the buyer's agent before they show your listing? Should you place a call to the buyer's agent before they come in and show your listing? All right, Monica, let this throw down begin. Uh, I think we can start because I've got a mic drop for you. I'm actually a little nervous about that. <laughs> right, I'm going to go with kind of the cop out here. And that is, it depends. It depends. Yeah. To me. What does it depend on? Yeah, okay. It depends on a couple of things. Well, first of all, obviously the instructions of the seller, the sellers want you to make that call before every showing, then you're going to do it. They just want you to sell that damn house. Well, if that's what they want, you're going to do it. However, okay. if you are calling just to reiterate the marketing remarks the agent remarks, the number of beds and baths. Like if you're reiterating something to me, please don't, please don't call me. I'm serious. That is ridiculous. All right. Now, if you have something maybe that's come up just before the showing or something to describe, like I recently sold my house and I needed to describe the fact that there's a doggy door in one of the French doors. However, I have the full pane of glass that can be replaced if they don't want the doggy door in there. And that was just to me, like I could write it, but I thought it would be confusing. And I thought it was just easier to call. Them. That makes sense. Uh, maybe it does. Maybe it does. As I'm saying it, it sounds a little ridiculous, but anyway, I'm going to go but with I mean, the they might want to know that. And it is, I mean, the agent remarks are pretty, you can't put everything in there. You don't, right. you don't get enough. So that is like one of those things. It's like, it's just easier for me to call about that. That's what I thought. That's what I yeah, thought. I agree. But I don't, as a rule, do it just because. I do it if there's a reason. Look, are you done? Yeah. Okay. Bring it. I agree. You shouldn't call just because. I agree that there is always a reason to call. <laughs> what? Like what? Look. This buyer agent has never been in the house mm -hmm. and neither has their buyers, likely, right? Right. So you are calling because your job is to sell the house. So the information that you need to gather at this time is information about the buyers to help you better negotiate for your clients. So this is the time when these little Pop-Tart buyer agents that only have five customers a year, so this person is 20% of their income, they're super excited to be showing them the house, they will tell you everything you want to know about the buyer. And I mean, that can only be done prior to the showing? Yes, because that's when they're excited. Okay. When do you want to... Don't tell them when they realize they're negotiating with you. That's stupid. Tell them before they start negotiating with you. Oh my gosh, we're the, you know, you're the whatever, depending on whatever is going on with the house, right? So like if you're having a lot of showings, you can call and be like, oh gosh, did I call you already? Because you probably forgot if you called them. Or right. Not. And then they're like, it's oh so crap. many showings. <laughs> There's so many showings yeah. and you could be like, you know, we've had a lot of traffic. Have your buyers been looking for a long time? What else are they looking at? What have they not found? If they have been looking for a long time, like, why aren't they finding anything? What's going on with them? When do they need to move? Blah, 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 blah. Ask all thousand questions that you have. So out of 
let's say 15 showings, how many people do you actually need to know that about? 15. No, one. You need to know about the one that's going to buy. So you, you don't know which one is going to buy. So call them and find out. 14 unnecessary conversations. They're not unnecessary ever. You have now built a relationship with that agent. So there has been so many times when I've called and, you know, gotten all this information. So now like me and the agent are like friends, right? Cause I'm like, okay, well, if we're going to do this deal and your client needs whatever, our client needs a 60 day closing or whatever little thing that it is. Right. So right. they can write a better offer. Cause I don't want their stupid offer. So it's like, okay, then we can do that. And if that agent has a question, they will call me while they're there. I need, it is my job to help them sell the house. They have never been in there. And if I know it's important to their buyer, I could be like, make sure you show them this, make sure you show them that. Oh my gosh, little Johnny next door is the same age. Like whatever it is. I don't know if that you're allowed right. to do it. I don't know if you're allowed to do it. But uh, that's, but that's in line with what I'm saying. If there is something that you were not able to convey through the pictures, through the descriptions and through the MLS details, then yeah, a call is warranted. But no, I'm you, saying use it as a negotiation tool. Listen, let me tell you a little story. Tell me a story. This was probably like, oh my gosh, it had to be eight years ago or something silly, a long time ago. And I called and the agent told me everything. She said, oh my gosh, my buyers have been looking at houses. They've lost every house to other buyers. I'm like, oh gosh, that's terrible, you know? So she put an off, her clients put an offer in. And it wasn't full price. So the sellers knew the information that I knew. Mm -hmm. I shared it with them. So of Mm -hmm. course they wanted to counter back Mm -hmm. full price. Because they know they're desperate at this point. I called and I said, I'm sure you don't want to lose another house for your clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Had she not told me that, it may have been totally different. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying like be a jerk about it, but like you are working for the seller if you're the listing agent. It's correct. So you need to work for them. I and will, you have to, and is your, you are a salesperson. You have to sell the house. And the best way to sell the house is to be in communication with people. And if, if all it took to sell a house was to open up a door and people to walk through it, then what are we doing? We don't have a job. Well, what do you mean by selling? Because I look at selling a house as properly positioning it to the market. I'm not going to push in any way anybody to be able to sell or buy this house. Well, you can't push anybody into buying a house. Like they're going to either like it or not like it. But you can certainly point out special features. Like when I go look at cars, I may not know like all the special features of the cars, but say it's really important to me that I have Google Maps navigation. Maybe I don't know that piece. And by looking at it, maybe I couldn't tell. Would you ask the question? Well, if you were an interested maybe, buyer, may, I mean, probably. But mm-hmm. if I'm looking at two cars and one salesperson is asking me questions, and mm-hmm. I'm feeling like he's really trying to understand what I'm what I'm going for here, and he asks me the question, you know, what's important about your next car, and I say having Google Maps, and he's like, Oh my gosh, this has Google Maps. Mm-hmm then I'm excited, you know? (laughs) Whereas like, if you're just waiting for me to ask all the questions, there may be even some stuff that he asks me that I didn't think about because I'm not a car salesman. If there were a hundred buyers buying a hundred houses this month, how many of them do you think did not buy a house because they were missing a bit of data? I don't know. Very few, if any right? Like if you were there, they would have bought it? No, I don't think that that's the case, but I think that you have, so I agree with you on that. I think some people go look at houses that are not really prepared to buy and it's not because of anything with the house, but I think that you're, if I'm the listing agent, my job is to do the best to get an offer. And I think you're, you're positioned better if you've been in communication with the agent, you have an understanding of who's coming to look at the house. Look, I've canceled showings before after this conversation also, because it's like, if they want an, you know, a flat yard, this is on a hill. They're not going to like it. Right. So uh, it's like, ever why had buyers though compromise on one of their key uh, requirements? It depends on why that's their key requirement. But see, that's not my job because I'm not the buyer's agent. The buyer's agent, it's their job to understand the motivation of the buyer. And then it's our job as agents to communicate, to help both parties get 
what they truly want because they don't always know how to express it, but we're the professionals and we can hear things that they are like, we can hear the unsaid. Mm. Okay. And we are there to navigate this process for them. So we need to be in communication. We need to be helping them. And the best way to help them is helping each other. So like if I can position this house and point out things because they will never know because they've never been in the house before and it helps them tap into the motivation of the buyer. Great. And if it doesn't, who cares? Then I've just talked to another agent. Great. We need to talk to each other more. Now that I agree with the camaraderie piece. It's never a wasted call ever. I, I actually really actually agree with that. But if we were just talking about it on the merits of trying to sell the house, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we should get a, a like hologram of you. And when you walk in the house, you're standing there as like a hologram and you're saying, let me I thought of that. But listen, if, if a hologram, I did actually think of like doing something like that, but not of me of like the sellers or some, something generic telling them all the crap that we can't say. That's actually super important. Mm. But anyway, Mm -hmm. that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. Let's put Um, that on on another day. And we're just going to step off that soapbox. (laughs) But the thing is, and I think a lot of, this is what's starting to be missing in, well, in the world, but we're just talking about our industry. We have to have voice to voice communication. Like we have to talk to each other because you're going to say something in our conversation that's going to spark something that I like, oh, I never thought about that. Or, oh, I have thought about that. What do you think about this? Like, there's so much more we can get done by being in communication with each other verbally that you can't do through a hologram or over text or like written. It's just not, it's the low, it's like the highest form of communication I think is like a, like, well, I think it's like something like this, like a zoom call or like a face to face. Yeah. Body language. Yeah. Some type of like face to face. Now you're hitting below the belt because you know, that's my, that's my thing. Now you're talking real or uh, relationships and now you're trying to knock me out. (laughs) No, I agree with that. I just sold you on my idea. Yeah. You you know, you did. You know, you did. That is everything. That is everything. All right. Well, since you're, why don't you crawl back to your corner? (laughs) Wounded. (laughs) We're going to take a short break and hear a word from our sponsor. When we return, we'll have the final punches. Do you have an entrepreneur mindset? Do you believe in the power of building wealth versus just selling houses? There's a new kind of business model for realtors, and you owe it to yourself to see why top agents and teams are aligning their future with the fastest growing real estate company in the world. EXP Realty, tomorrow's brokerage today. For more information or a private discussion, go to the Toe to Toe Podcast Facebook page and send a private message telling us you'd like to learn more about EXP Realty. Welcome back to Toe to Toe Podcast. Before we ring the bell for the final round, I want you to know that Jen and I took this fight to the streets. Mm-hmm. Yes, we did. I went, uh, went on my Facebook page and I asked a few realtors to chime in on this, asking them, should you call the buyer's agent prior to them showing your listing? Shocker, 50-50. Wow. All right. What did I they know. say? I know. My good friend, Deb Jolson, said something that I'd like to repeat because this is hey, kind Deb. of what you were saying. Yeah, she's awesome. Follow Deb if you don't. J-U-L-S-O-N, Deb Jolson. Uh, she says, since it, it, it's such a great opportunity to build rapport with the other agent and maybe reveal something about their buyers and point out things not oh. to miss. Oh, Deb. Oh, you and yes. Deb are just the right aligned, aren't you? <laughs> and she says, it's also great to add your value proposition when you meet with future sellers. And I do agree, like you could ask them, if this is important, would you like me to place a um, live call to buyer's agent? I'm going to disagree with you on that. No? Like, they can't tell us how to do our job. No, no. No. No, but if you do it, you can position if you do it. You as- just say it, but I don't ask them for permission. You do your process that works because <laughs> right. you have evidence that it works. How many houses have they sold? None. 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 All right. Sorry. And uh, I'll tell you what, though. Aaron, Aaron Fay, give a big shout out. Aaron. Cincinnati. She says, no. And listen, what? I'm going to listen to Aaron because she is a badass buyer's agent. He is, that's true. He does it at the highest level. 
And she says, no, unless there is a real legitimate need. And frankly, even that case, I'd rather you text me because <laughs> I'm a buyer's agent full time. And I, uh, and I show, I don't know, 10 to 30 houses a week, depending on the season. If every agent called me, I would go crazy. You know, there's something to think about there for sure. I, I get it, Aaron. I'm on your, I'm on your side, Aaron. Jen is not on your side. Well, I think that because that's coming from the cloud of what you had said, that they're just repeating crap that Aaron already re- can read. Yeah. You know, she is a great buyer's agent too. So like, I totally get it from her point of view. And I would be irritated too, if you're just calling me with crap. I mean, I'm a literate person and right. I read it. That's why you put it in there. Right. But I'm saying like, come with value. Come Don't with be value. annoying. Lord have mercy. Okay. We tore up the mat today. We are. Let's uh let's go and close out with our final round. All right, Monica, you have one minute. Okay. I feel pretty strongly about this. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Your apathy is killing me. <laughs> Listen, I'm very serious about this. If you're just calling because you think you want to just touch base with me before I show your house, please dumb. please Stop. don't. If you have something that you were not able to convey through the MLS or you absolutely think has changed lately or there's some sense of urgency going on, like, yes, give it to me. I love it. But this whole notion of we should just call it a call because it's part of a process, I'm not about it. No, I agree. And I don't think you should call it a call either. That's really stupid. You need to call with a purpose. And the purpose is to sell the damn house. So you want to find out as much information as possible about the buyer so that you can point out things that this specific buyer would like about the house. And so you have a good understanding of where they're coming from. So when they put in an offer, if they put in an offer, I mean, the average is within around 10 showings, you should get an offer. So you're not making 15 calls usually. Right. And if you are making 15 calls, you're probably going to get a multiple offer. So all the more reason to make the calls. You, you, you're on fire about this one today. Because I love this topic (laughs) and I feel like I literally never get a call. And if I do get a call, like if I'm showing a property, well, I'm mostly a listing agent. Yeah, you don't. But if, if I'm showing a property and I, I do get a dumb call, that's, that is bad. But if I get like a good one and they're a good salesperson, I'm like, yeah, finally. But it's usually somebody I freaking trained. Hey, you know what? I want to ask this of you. Next time you're showing a house and somebody calls you for no reason, I want you to send them the link to this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to. Say, hey, this is something for you. <laughs> uh, like I'm going to get out my no button on this. No. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what I have for you, yes. Marty Mert. All right. That's going to have to be the end of today's battle. Do you think there was a knockout? Did I get punched in the face today or what? (laughs) I would never punch you in the face. No, because I'm too quick. I would duck. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm just like the matrix. I'm like quick like that. All right, guys, tell, tell us who you think won. Please go to our Facebook page. It's toe to toe. It's with the number two, toe dash two dash toe podcast. Facebook page and let us know, give us some feedback. And of course, always, we appreciate you liking and following and subscribing and reviewing every podcast and let us know how we're doing and and what else you'd like to hear from us on. Perfect. Send us your suggestions. Thanks, Monica. All right. Thanks. Have a good day, Jen. See ya. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Toe to Toe Podcast. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get updates when new episodes are available. And we truly love feedback and would appreciate all likes, reviews, and suggestions for future topics.